This is Andrew Wolf, and I am going to make a short video about acute respiratory distress syndrome, otherwise known as ARDS. Now, acute respiratory distress syndrome is a disease of lung inflammation, and the inflammation leads to a um, cascade of events that leads to lung injury. Now, there are a number of different things. The, the lungs are very prone to injury um, for a number of reasons. And I'm going to get at that as we talk through this video. Now, the lung inflammation is really centered around the nexus between the, um, the capillaries and the alveoli and the thin membrane in between. So this is really a um, syndrome of inflammation of the pulmonary al alveoli and capillaries. Now it can be caused by a number of things. So causes or pre predisposing events. Um, one, one possible cause is that there is injury to the alveoli. Now it could be injured by chemicals like you know smoke inhalation um, it could be caused by severe burns to the tissue if the person was in a fire and breathed in hot gases. Um, it can be caused by infection where we have little bacteria and a buildup of pus with injury to the alveolar um, epithelium. Or it can be caused by uh, by the come the inflammation can start in the capillary side. Now, what's interesting is if you have uh, inflammation somewhere else in the body. So let's say we have a person. This is a gut here, person's gut, and they have a scheme of gut because they have a um, you know the vessels supplying their gut has a big um, atheroma or an embolus and it clots the gut off, uh, the blood supply off to the gut and we end up with ischemic gut. What's going to happen? Well, um, cells are going to lyse and die and, um, and they're going to release lysosomes into the blood, into the venous supply and um, the tissues are going to become very inflamed because of the ischemia. Um, so we're going to have you know lysosomes and we're going to have um, cytokines from ischemia and where is it going to go? Well it's going to go up to the right side of the heart, dump it to the right side of the heart and then from the right side of the heart it's going to get pumped to the lungs, right? and all of these inflammatory mediators and lysosomes from lyse cells and you know high concentrations of potassium and all sorts of other things the sort of nasty inflammatory brew is going to get pumped you know rel relatively rapidly through the large vessels um, from the heart and then they're going to slow down in the capillaries and these are going to start interacting with the sensitive endothelial cells inside the pulmonary capillaries. So the lungs are sort of the first stop as um, blood returns from injured cells throughout the body. So it make, the lungs are very prone to inflammation spreading f um, to them from other organs in the body. So this brew here can start a inflammatory cascade and what happens with in inflammation, whether the inflammation is starting in the capillaries or whether they're, you know, whether they're starting in the capillaries or whether it's starting in in the alveoli, um, the it starts the same cascade. We end up with capillary leak. So the endothelial cells are going to are going to contract and open up spaces between them and this is going to allow fluid to leak out, right? So we're going to end up with significant capillary leak and fluid is going to leak out. 
into the basement membrane. Um, so we have proteins, fluids leaking out, so we end up with pulmonary edema. And we're going to end up with vasodilation. And then we're going to end up with an entire, um, with an inflammatory cascade. Um, so we're going to have neutrophils coming to the area, and the neutrophils are going to um, are going to escape the capillaries and embed within the tissues here. And we're going to have um, basophils and mast cells, and lots of cytokines, um, and we're going to end up with severe inflammation. And the inflammation is going to start causing dam injury to the cells. It's going to injure the type 2 endothelial cells. And these cells are critical for producing surfactant. So we're going to have decreased surfactant production. So we have, so far we have pulmonary edema, and we have decreased surfactant production. Okay, now we're also going to have um, vessel, we're going to develop scarring over time within, within the tissues here, and we're going to have decreased diffusion capacity. Okay, so what are all the effects of these things going to be? Well, let's talk about this over here. So we have our alveoli, and we have our capillaries, and usually the membrane in between them is very, very thin, right? They have a shared membrane. But now we have edema within this membrane, and the membrane is thickened, so that causes decreased diffusion. The decreased diffusion is going to lead to hypoxia, right? And then if the pulmonary edema continues to increase, we're going to actually flood the alveoli. And if we flood the alveoli, we're going to end up with a physiologic right to left shunt. Okay? So, number one is decreased diffusion. Number two is a right to left shunt. Or you can think about it as a VQ mismatch. Okay, and then um, to the alveoli that aren't um, completely filled with fluid um, are going to have damage to their type 2 alveolar cells, and this is going to cause a decrease in surfactant production and decreased in surfact decreased surfactant production is um, going to cause decreased compliance so the lungs are going to get stiff and difficult to ventilate and then sort of a late effect that occurs over time is fibrosis. Remember one of the last steps of the inflammatory process is the deposition of fibrin within um, within the inflamed tissue. So we're going to get fibrin deposition and permanent thickening and fibrosis of the alveolar capillary membrane. And this is going to cause, um, this is going to have significant diffusion deficits, so it's going to cause chronic hypoxia, and it also will um, cause um, significant decrease in compliance as well because the lungs are going to be stiff by all the fibrin that has built up in the capillary membranes around the system. Now, all of these things sort of, you know, acutely, the diffusion. Um, the VQ mismatch and the decreased compliance are going to cause acute respiratory failure. And, you know, this usually lasts for a, um, a number of days. And then um, this stuff, this acute stuff, is going to start to get better, but 
there is going to be permanent injury because of this fibrosis and this is going to cause chronic respiratory problems. Now it really depends on how much inflammation there was and how long it lasted, um, how severe this chronic disease will be, but there is always some degree of, of um, lung stiffening and loss of diffusion capacity um, after a bout of ARDS. Some of it can be crippling, so patients really, really have a hard time getting off the vent after a long time. Um, okay, so um, that is my brief introduction to acute respiratory distress syndrome. And uh, please take a moment to rate this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and please leave a comment if you, um, if you would like. Thank you.